We've got a pack of cards. I'll give you a quick look through them. You can see uh, they're kind of just a random order there. But this trick is about shuffling anyway. So we're going to try and make them even more of a random order. And I'm not even going to shuffle them. Uh, you're going to shuffle them. What I'm going to ask you to do in a second is deal out onto the table as many as you like. Let's try and make it roughly half, so between 20 and 40, although it doesn't matter. And then you're going to riffle shuffle them together. So this is me doing it for real, everyone. Here's your card, so you so can deal. deal like this? Like yeah, just deal onto the table as many as you like. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. 27. 28. 28, okay. Yep. And I'll just order them up for you, so yep. nice. And then you're going to riffle shuffle those together. It's important to show you, Bray, that you didn't do a perfect shuffle, even after all this practice you've been having and you've been telling me about. So I'm going to shuffle them in. Happy? Yep. In they go. Wouldn't it be weird if, after the random number of cards you counted, uh, after the riffle shuffle you did, you actually shuffled them back into order? Wouldn't that be strange? Oh, it's just not quite well. I mean, you've got two red and two black. I mean, it doesn't look like you actually have Brady, does it? No, they're not in order. Mm, not at all, except for unless, unless I could maybe convince you that actually you did shuffle into more, them into order. Because actually what you did, without realizing, you shuffled it so every two cards, every pair of cards has one of each color. The first two is a red and a black. Next two, red and a black. Red and a black. Every two cards has one of each color all the way through, even if there's points where there's a double red together, if we deal them off in twos, strangely, each pair of two has one of each color, which surely you'd agree that's quite improbable. It's amazing. But it gets much more interesting than that. Because wouldn't it be strange if every four cards had one of each suit? There's a heart, a club, a spade, a diamond there. The next four cards, there's a heart, club, spade, diamond. Even though they're in a different order, there's still definitely one of each suit. Again, a different order. Every four cards, it's a different order, but there's definitely one of each suit in each four. Isn't that strange? So maybe you are better at shuffling than you thought. And it is quite impressive, but do you know what, Brady? Do you know what you've done even better than that? You've shuffled it. So every 13 cards has one of each value. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Let's have a check of these 13 cards. There's definitely one of each value in ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Jack, queen, kings, crazy. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Jack, queen, king. Oh, one of each order again. Isn't that strange? Again, one of each order. And you'll notice it's weird because the order's different in each set of 13. Fantastic. Would you, would you like to know some of the maths behind it and how you can do it too? How you can sort out? Okay. All right, let's do that. Right. So I'm going to show you the properties of a permutation uh, that you go through when you do that shuffle. So the shuffle being that you deal out a certain number of cards and then you riffle shuffle them in. It doesn't matter if it's not perfect. What properties does that permutation have? So to demonstrate it, I've numbered the cards just with the natural counting numbers 1 through to 52. And we're going to do that shuffle to these cards just to see what happens. So the first thing was you dealt out some cards. Again, it doesn't matter how many you dealt out. I think, I think you did 28. Yeah, because you did, you did a surprise one at the end. And what's important here is when you deal them out, you're reversing the order. That's the crucial thing. So because of the ones at the top, now it's going to be at the bottom. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 5, 26, 27, 28. So those are your 28 cards with the order reversed. OK? Now. We're going to riffle these two together. And the only thing we can guarantee is that this card is going to get shuffled in above this card, above this card, and so on and so on. OK, so these are going to get riffled together in a second. When we push these together, we're going to get a new string of numbers. OK, when we push these together, we're going to get a new string of numbers. And we're going to look at the crucial properties that always occur in this permutation. So the first thing I want to try and convince you is that when we push these together, if we take the first, let's say, 10 cards or 11 cards or 12 cards, they will be a set of consecutive numbers. For example, let's say the first ones that I, this first I get this one from this pile, and then this one, maybe another one, maybe another one from this pile, maybe another one. But you can see what happens whenever I add one to the bottom of the pile as I shuffle them together. The one I add is always going to be one smaller than the smallest card I have so far, or one bigger than the biggest card I have so far. 
because here I'm kind of counting down, here I'm counting up. So I'm either going to be adding one smaller than the smallest card I have so far, or one bigger than the biggest card. That means that the cards I collect here will all be consecutive, because I've just built, it, built them up by taking one from one side, or the other side, or this side, this side, so it'll all be a consecutive string of numbers. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So they are consecutive even though they're mixed up. And it doesn't matter how many I take, I'll still get a string of consecutive numbers, even though they're mixed up. Okay, that's a guaranteed fact. The next thing I want to convince you of uh, is that the first k numbers are all different modulo k. So just in case we don't know what modulo is, uh, modulo is essentially the remainder you get when you divide by that number. So 6 modulo 5 is 1, because it has the remainder of 1. And 11 modulo 5 is also 1. 12, 12 modulo 5 is 2, so we've got two, two, fives, two fives, and then we've got the 2. Well, let's just look at, we'll look at 5s for now. So if we look at the first 5 cards, they're consecutive numbers. They're not in the right order, but these numbers are consecutive. If we have five consecutive numbers, it's actually a guaranteed fact that they will be, all be different modulo five. So let me try and explain that like this. I've, I've written out the first 16 counting numbers, and if I take uh, the first five, you can see they're all different modulo five. Uh, if I divide by five, I get a remainder one, a remainder two, a remainder three, a remainder four, a remainder zero. Uh, and if I shifted up to the next five consecutive numbers, I've lost this modulo 1, but I've gained this one here. So even though I've lost this modulo 1, I've gained this one. So these five consecutive numbers are still all different, modulo 5. And I could do it again, but each time I shift up, I lose this modulo 5, I've gained the equivalent value at the top. And you can keep on doing that each time losing uh, a value, but gaining the equivalent modulo value at the top. So that means any five numbers will all be different modulo five. And actually any six numbers will all be different modulo six for whatever value we take. And the third fact, so here um, I've taken out the first 10 of our shuffle. Now we know that these 10 numbers are all different modulo 10. If they're all different modulo 10, then there must be two of each value modulo five. Can you see that here? There's two, modulo, two that are equivalent to one modulo five two equivalent to two, three, four, five, and so on. So we've got 10 numbers, all different modulo 10, but two of each modulo five. So these five are all different modulo five, and that means that the next five are also going to be different modulo five. And actually, if we continue that on, the next five will be different modulo five, and so on and so on. We continue that indefinitely. Each set of five has one of each value, each equivalent value modulo five. That is all you need to know about this trick. Because in this trick, we haven't actually used numbers. Uh, we've used the, the values of cards. Because these numbers start in counting order, they naturally cycle through the different values for each modulo. So for each set of four, we've got the one modulo four, two, three, zero, one modulo four, two, three, zero, and so on. Or we could look at modulo 13s, which would relate to the different values, and so on. So to do this trick, we, we need to set up the cards so they cycle through the different values, just as the counting numbers cycle through the different modulos. Okay, so maybe I can relate the clubs to one mod four. Uh, maybe I can relate the hearts to two mod four, the spades to three mod four, diamonds to zero mod four. Okay, so we know we're going to have it so it goes clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds, clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds. That also goes black, red, black, red, black, red. So kind of alternating modulo two as well. And because we want it to do the thing with the values of the cards, the ace through kings, we want a system that cycles through the ace through kings in a repeating cycle as well. But just having ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king looks like it's an ordered pack. So what we do, we have a, we have a stack system. So it looks mixed up, but actually is a repeating order. So the very start, when I showed Brady the cards, at first glance, maybe it looked random, but actually it was completely ordered, completely set up. I'm going to get them so they cycle through clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds, and also so they cycle through one of each value every 13 cards. So here's a pack of cards. We've got it completely ordered. So we're, I'm going to use a very famous way of stacking the cards uh, that uses a rhyme. Eight kings threaten to save 
nine fair ladies for one sick knave. I'll show you what I mean, okay? We're gonna go clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds. So eight kings threaten three, 10, two, save, seven, save, nine fair ladies for one sick knave. And then we'll just do it again. But now we're starting at the hearts. We started originally at the clubs, now we do hearts. Eight kings, three, ten, two, save, nine fair ladies, four, one, oops, ladies, sick, knave. I think we've got two more. Eight kings, one, sick, knave. See, it not only cycles just how the counting numbers cycle through odds and evens, so different values modulo two, this also cycles through black, red, black, red, black, red, black, red. Just how the counting numbers cycle through different values modulo four. Club, heart, spades, diamonds, club, heart, spades, diamonds, club, heart, spades, diamonds. By the way, the mnemon mnemonic magicians usually use for that is chased. C for clubs, H for hearts, S for spades, D for diamonds. And then you can see just how the counting numbers cycle through the different values modulo 13. We cycle through the different 13 possible values of a card. So eight, king, three, ten, two, seven, nine, five, queen, four, a6 jack. Then, then you can just start the trick. But I, you could have actually added one more convincer, which I might have forgotten to do. You can say uh, it's, a, it's a, a pack of cards, all different cards, and you can let them give them a cut. So you can say to them, uh, I want to I wanna let you start the pack at any, any card you like. So you can cut the pack anywhere, you cut the pack anywhere you like, and then they can start from there, dealing off. And that'll be fine because it will still cycle through the different values in order and the different uh, suits in order and red, black, red, black. So you can start with a cut if you like, if you want it even more convincing. This number file episode was supported by Audible.com, leading provider of audiobooks and spoken material. Audible's got over 180,000 titles to choose from. And if this video has got you in the mood for some magic, why not try Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clark? It's a great alternative history tale about magic making a comeback to England in the 19th century. It's not just a great story, but a substantial novel with the audiobook weighing in at over 30 hours. Perfect for whiling away all that time during commutes to work, long drives or otherwise boring plane flights. So why not give it a try with Audible's famed 30 day trial, you can cancel any time if it's not for you. Now you can download the book I just suggested or any other of your choice for free when you go to audible.com slash number file. Audible's great, I use it myself as a paying customer and I'd like to thank them again for supporting this video.